I'm going to speak in advocacy of zero impact Wikimedia community projects, which the Wikimedia Foundation should fund. This is provocative, this is controversial. Why should the Wikimedia Foundation fund programs that don't have any impact or and don't advance any of its goals? I'll, I'll tell you why. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I'm Wikimedian in residence at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. I've been involved in Wiki community organization since about 2010. I've participated in this organization in collaboration with lots of Wikimedia community affiliate organizations. What is an affiliate organization? Sometimes a group of Wikipedians, Wikimedians will get together, collaborate to do some kind of outreach project or have a campaign to develop Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects with, with content or recruitment training, make the Wiki a better place, improve the health of the community. And historically, back in 2010, when I started doing this, there was a culture being developed in which the Wikimedia Foundation didn't have any money, money was scarce, and they would fund programs for impact, but they didn't want to fund the administration to support those programs. And now there's more money in the Wikimedia movement, but part of the culture persists in that the Wikimedia Foundation wants to fund programs, but they don't want to fund the administration of the programs. And some of the evidence of this hesitation to fund the administration is that you can look at the grants, and administration just isn't nearly as supported as programs. Also, unusually for a foundation, the Wikimedia Foundation does not recommend a default amount of indirect costs per grant, no finance and administration fees. So for example, if, it, if it, many other foundations, if they give out a grant of a certain size, they'll say, we expect 20% of the cost of this grant to go to administration because there's certain paperwork and documentation that we expect you to do. We don't expect you to crowdsource that or do this with volunteers. We'll pay for the administration. And so on top of every grant, we give you another 20%, and that's your administration cost. The Wikimedia Foundation doesn't do this. By default, administration costs are zero until and unless the Wikimedia community members applying for the grant request it, negotiate it, and, and, and manage to receive it. And there's just not a culture of supporting administration in the Wikimedia movement uh, with the Wikimedia Foundation tolerating this, just lack of administration. So I'm going to describe the kinds of administration, administrative tasks which community organizations need to do as, as part of getting a grant. And I'm in advocacy, I support the Wikimedia Foundation paying money for actual staff of the organization to do these administrative tasks, even when this money is not also tied to programs for impact. That is, you, you, there should be a budget, they should be separate. The, the programs for things like recruiting new editors, making sure that Wikipedia articles get edited, photo campaigns, all these, all these kind of content programs, that should be separated from administration. So what are the administrative costs? Well, the, the basic administrative cost that the Wikimedia Foundation always wants from an organization is an annual report. Uh, it takes time to do an annual report, and I'll, I'll describe what a, a typical organization does for it to require an annual report or need an annual report. So we're talking about, and I'll, I'll use Wikimedia New York City as an, as an example. This is an organization that with no money, with no funding whatsoever, just volunteers do these things, organizes dozens of meetups per year, has a membership of, of several hundred people. They all do their own programs. Sometimes they do it more in collaboration with the group. Sometimes they form small subcommittees and they, they do some kind of event, say someone, someone might want to organize an event at their school and they do Wikipedia training for students. Or somebody has a, a collaboration where they talked with a docent at a museum and they get access to museum resources and they add that to Wikipedia. They do, they do that on their own. And Wikimedia in New York City, it's one of the most active Wikimedia community organizations, frequently operating with, with no budget, either for programs or administration. And it needs to report these things, even if it doesn't have a budget, even if these are just volunteer impacts. It's good to show the history of what these volunteers have, have done. And it takes administrative support because the kind of people who organize meetups and trainings, outreach events, they may not have the skill set to produce a an annual report. So we need paid staff, professional support that connects with other people who write annual reports, does it in the standardized way, and is able to submit a, a, an annual report that is comparable with other Wikimedia community groups. Even if an organization is not the size of Wikimedia New York City, say it only has a meetup every few months and it's 
a few dozen people. There's still a need for annual reports and these things should still be sponsored at an appropriate scale for the size of the organization. So if you have an annual report, it's going to list some kind of outreach events, typically meetups, and that's something else that requires administrative support to do. We can't expect volunteers to do every aspect of a meetup. What a, what a wiki volunteer will do as a, as a volunteer is they like to go and present at these things. They like to teach other people how to edit Wikipedia, to talk about Wikipedia with other people. But volunteers of this sort, they have trouble with the administrative side, which is registering a room with a community center and filing as an organization because the community center will want to know what is your affiliation, can you fill out these forms, can you prove that you're a legitimate community organization. The volunteer just wants to present, they don't want to do this kind of administration. Somebody needs to arrange for a volunteer organization, it takes multiple people to organize a meetup, like uh, do you keep a point of contact, who's going to answer emails, how do you do the communication to get people to come to the meetup or outreach event, who organizes the cleanup, is anyone going to arrange for snacks or to serve other kinds of things. Some, somebody has to do this and we need administrative support, we shouldn't crowdsource this. If you have a meetup, then you should document that it happened. And the way we do things in the wiki community, since we value transparency so much, is that we document that the meetup happened on Wikipedia. We might advertise this in multiple places. Documentation should happen in different channels. Uh, popular places to, to document uh, uh, meetups or any kind of outreach or any kind of program, social media accounts. So someone has to maintain the social media accounts. and I. That should be the administrator, the staff administrator for the organization. There should be an email list, so it's also documented in email, and then it needs to be documented in wiki. Volunteers, if you leave them to their own, they might document it in one of these places, and it would be haphazard, and it's not appropriately categorized. But if you're going to be accessible and make sure that the event can actually reach people and that it's transparent, you need staff administration of the documentation process. All right. so. Uh, we have an annual report that reports the meetups. It's able to report the meetups because the meetups are documented. And we've had volunteers, not staff, who are organizing the, the, the program activities at these meetups. And the staff of the organization should give them thanks, recognition, and credit. If you have a volunteer or partner organizations like the museums or libraries or universities that, that host the events or send their experts to events, somebody has to say thank you to them or somebody should say thank you to them. It's hard to crowdsource thanks, but if you have a routine process from an organization, then every time someone gives something to the group, you can say thanks to them. You should send them thanks by email. You should put credit for them in the annual report. And if you have annual reports to give thanks to organizations year after year, then that's how you build a relationship with them. So that you're not so dependent on a particular point of contact at the organization. You have continuity with the organization. They'll always host your events. They'll always collaborate with you. They'll understand the, the value of the relationship with Wikipedia if you start giving credit. You also need to give credit to individual volunteers, just people who say, I care about such and such a topic. I'm going to support Wiki people to develop this topic in a wiki campaign. So you, you need to have somebody from the organization say thank you for volunteering your time to do this. You have to give credit to your participants. If you get a donation even of in-kind support from an organization, say uh, a university hosts you, they give you a space, that has value and you should keep some kind of record of in-kind donations of that sort. And sometimes they'll actually even spend money on wiki community members for partnerships. They'll give you coffee or cookies. They'll waive the fees for audio visual, video support to have projection or whatever, whatever support you need. The, the trash cleanup or the, the cleanup of the room, there, there's cost of these kinds of things. And if you have in-kind support, sometimes buy and buy, members will say, we don't have anything, but I'll buy the cookies for the events. You actually have the volunteers paying for things. And it could happen that the Wikimedia Foundation itself pays for some part of this budget. But you need administrative staff support to publish a budget, give credit for all the kinds of valuable things received by this wiki organization. And whenever the Wikimedia Foundation gives money, someone needs to track the dollars because the Wikimedia Foundation is strict about the budgets and they want receipts and proof that the money is being spent. And also the wiki community itself wants transparency. They frequently check the budgets. Wiki community events, they're much more transparent than with a typical nonprofit organization or any kind of organization. The budgets go online. This is a wiki community value. The wiki community members expect to see a nice budget. You cannot crowdsource a budget. You need to have paid staff produce the budget. It, it just doesn't work to crowdsource these kind of things. Leave it, leave it to somebody without tra training or uh, continuity with the group or the budget style changes from event to event. 
To coordinate all of these things, someone's got to maintain a point of contact with the organization. Sometimes somebody will want a relationship with the Wiki community organization, Wikimedia New York City, or if it's thematic, like Wiki LGBT, or in any other kind of group that organizes any kind of Wiki event, either by region or by theme. And somebody has to be the point of contact. So if somebody sends an email, say like a museum says, I want to collaborate with your group, somebody's got to answer that email. You can't just crowdsource it and say, email one of these 10 people and maybe they'll communicate with the group. Also, groups tend to have multiple points of contact to be more accessible. Multiple social media channels, because some people use one channel and don't use other. Many people don't use email. So somebody's got to maintain all these, these points of contact. If you're sending out a mailing list, to advertise events, there's people who have questions about this and say, is the event accessible? Can you provide childcare? What, what, what do I need to know to prepare for this event? And someone's got to answer these. Paid staff, you don't, you don't crowdsource that. If you have a point of contact, then one of the kind of messages that you're going to receive are safety complaints, misconduct, and harassment. It's unfortunate, but this is the truth, that there's a lot of people in this world who protest Wikipedia for whatever reason. Wikipedia covers a great many topics, and there's many people in this world who don't like something in this world, and if that something in this world that they don't like has a Wikipedia article about it, uh, maybe a war, maybe a political issue, maybe a social or ethical issue, sometimes they will take their anger out on the Wiki community organization. Also, Wiki community members, if they organize events, they tend to get harassed. It, it's this is a consequence of being a public figure and sometimes people angry people will take their anger out on all kinds of issues on wiki community members whatever the case i'm not going to explain so much about why this happens but it happens a lot many many wiki community organizations experience harassment from all kinds of people who show up out of the internet and when this happens the wiki community organization needs to have harassment prevention processes in place, harassment responses in place, and peer support in place. It's, it's a must because people will report safety concerns and you can't crowdsource this. You need to pay administrators for the group to manage these. Even if you have central reporting somehow to somewhere else, somebody needs to provide peer-to-peer -peer support. When you start having safety issues, you need to keep continuity with the membership and the regular participants of the organization. One strategy for doing this is to keep a membership list. Some people register as members of the organization. If they register as members of the organization, then they start getting certain rights and they get a certain degree of trust. I'm not saying the membership needs to be complicated, but you need to keep a contact list for uh, communications. You need to keep some continuity if people are coming to the events. Uh, is somebody the target of harassment? You need to know who they are. Perhaps if somebody's coming to events and they're associated with misconduct, you need to know who they are. And by and by, you need to distinguish who's more associated with this organization and who doesn't speak for or represent the organization. The standard way to do this is with a membership list. There's nothing unusual about this, but what is unusual is that wiki community organizations sometimes manage this with volunteers, don't manage it with volunteers, you need paid staff for this. Once you have a membership list, something else that comes up is the democratic process. The wiki community likes to appoint leadership for certain roles and also certain social and ethical issues arise in which there will be debate. The Wikimedia Foundation itself puts social and ethical issues out for the wiki community to discuss perhaps once a month throughout the year, this happens continually, and they call for comment, they won't, they won't comment. Some of those are relevant to a particular group, some of them may not be relevant, so some issues, like for example, LGBT, uh, then LGBT people need to know about this and they need, need to comment on that, and you have certain regions in the world where the, the regional chapter or the regional organization is very involved in LGBT issues, perhaps everyone in that chapter should be notified, whereas some organizations, they can get the message, but they may not be expected to, to comment on this. Say like, uh, I don't know, if they're transportation, subway, highways, train tracks, these kinds of things, maybe they wouldn't have so much comment on particular social issues. But whatever the case, uh, to have a robust democracy, robust decision-making process and valid conclusions about community consensus, you need to have an electoral process where somebody raises an issue 
it goes out to the membership or the stakeholder base. Those people have a way of speaking their voice. I'm not saying that it necessarily needs to be a democratic election where the most votes carries the issue, but you need to have a, a consensus process where people have a public discourse and people, people talk about what they want. The, the local chapter needs to do this. They need administrative support with paid staff to manage a, a good democracy and robust uh, discussion process. Another thing that you need to have valid elections, valid democracy, is you need some demographics of your membership list, you need some demographics of the stakeholders of the group. You could also call this a diversity check or the practice of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's problematic to ask people all their demographic information. If someone comes in, you can't just say, can I have your, 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 your race and your gender and your sexuality? I need to know your ethnicity and your religion. The demographic information that is acceptable to give, it's gonna vary from group to group, from region to region around the world, what's different and relevant. And this isn't something that the Wikimedia Foundation centrally for the entire world can mandate. They can't say, everyone get these demographic characteristics, we're gonna track them for everywhere in the world. Some place it's meaningful, some place it's safe, some place it's less meaningful, some place it's not safe to ask this kind of information. So you need local groups to manage this process and they need to do this with good, good discourse and good community conversation. If you have all this in place, something else that's going to happen is that the group is going to come to positions. It's going to say there was this global discourse. And here is our position on this particular issue. Like, for example, there was something called the Universal Code of Conduct. How should the Wikimedia movement address misconduct if someone's accused of harassing somebody else? How do, how do we handle this in all cases globally? And we had different community groups around the world often agree with each other, sometimes have disagreements on different points. And when they have disagreements or when there's difference of opinion, people need to be able to publish their statements on, on behalf of the group. You need to have a process for this. And if you do this, there's different ways that you could talk about this, different ways that it could look, but perhaps it looks something like a press release. I'm not saying that the group necessarily needs to go out to newspapers or journalists and say, here's our position, you need to publish it. But there's journalism within the wiki community where people say these groups had this position, these other groups had this position, and you need to publish position statements. So you could call this a press release, you could call it a position statement, but in any case, you publish the outcomes of your community discourse, and that's available as a, as a public record for, for anybody to review if they wanna know what is the mood of the group or what is the consensus of, of this part of the wiki community. When you start publishing position statements, they can be about all kinds of things. They can be about an ethical issue like conduct. They can be about other things like we support this initiative for um, Black History Month or LGBT Pride Month or women, women scientists, where you have some kind of campaign or program, monuments, <laughs> could be traffic and transportation, another very popular topic in Wikipedia. And if you start publishing statements that our group participated in this campaign and we found these social issues in the campaign and we edited this kind of content, then you start having the kind of position statements that can be useful as partner communications, the kinds of things that an organization can send to a cultural partner, like a university or a museum or a library, so that the wiki group can better collaborate with the community group. For example, the library may be wondering, who is this wiki organization? Why should we partner with them? But if there's position statements from the group that they can send to the library, then the library can say, oh, this is a like-minded organization. They care about knowledge for the community as well. And since they have these published documents giving their position, we know that we can trust them. And that builds relationships. If you start having conversations with external organizations, then you establish partnerships, community partnerships, and you can start having more complicated and complex and deeper community conversations where you can talk about social and ethical issues that don't just affect the wiki community, but that are also out in the community. And you can gather together and start to talk about the big issues of the day. You could talk about climate change. You could talk about health issues. COVID was a big thing that the wiki community couldn't talk about by itself. It had to partner with medical organizations where you get perspectives from the medical community and perspectives from the wiki community and you get expertise combined. Wiki's community expertise is in distribution and dissemination of information, but it, the information it distributes has to come from expert organizations. 
when you get expertise and wiki community media power, then you can start to publish white papers. A white paper is a research paper that describes the state of the, a thing or position of a thing. It's not quite peer reviewed research, but publishing a white paper may be a step towards publishing academic or scholarly research. And it often the white papers that the wiki community wants says that wiki has this practice of doing things. Experts say you should do things this way. Here's the difference between the two and here's how we reconciled it in conversation with the community for uh, best practice inside Wikipedia. So for example, we didn't always have the best expertise in COVID information. It was difficult to find sources, but the Wiki community was editing medical content in different ways. There had to be a reconciliation. Different papers got published. Some of these turned into research papers. Some of these are just white papers that are floating around in the Wiki community. Some other white papers or research papers that, that get floated around best practices for structured data with Wiki data, machine learning, artificial intelligence applications that happens to be very hot right now. It takes a lot of expertise and collaborations between community partners and wiki community for this to happen. And if you get to this point where you're writing research, you're writing white papers, you have robust, all of this, meetups, documentation, giving credit to contributors, you publish the budget, you have points of contact, you have a safety response, you have a membership list of people who care about this, democratic process and elections, you know the diversity of your community, you've talked with press, you have partnerships, you've had deep community conversations, you publish white papers, well guess what? Now you can apply for grants. And this grant money, it doesn't have to come from the Wikimedia Foundation. This is the point where if you've got all this together, you can ask foundations, you can ask governments, you can ask uh, other kinds of research institutions for money for this Wiki community organization to do more that benefits the community and benefits other stakeholders. You cannot really ask these organizations for administrative support the external organizations outside the Wikimedia movement, they're always going to want to fund programming only. They, they'll fund you a little bit of administration, but they won't fund all the kinds of activities that I've talked about. Which is why the Wikimedia Foundation should fund that kind of administration, because it's in the Wikimedia Foundation's interest to advance the Wikimedia movement. The best way to advance the Wikimedia movement is to support the Wiki community in maximizing and leveraging the most volunteer labor that it can. Volunteers are good at doing all these programs and having conversations and talking about Wiki. Volunteers are not good at doing the kind of administrative labor that nonprofit managers are best at doing, which is why the Wikimedia Foundation should pay generously for administration so that all these programs can manifest from that. That's the argument for Wikimedia Foundation funding zero impact administrative projects in Wikimedia community affiliates. Thanks for hearing me out.